Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today I'm going to do the incubator video. I know I've promised this video to you guys for a long time and just uh, finally have got around to uh, actually doing it. Um, today is just going to be all about uh, the incubators and how I incubate uh, the eggs just so that uh, you guys can see how I actually do things here and uh, by no means like this is like the perfect method or anything like that. Uh, it's just what I have done over the years and it works really really well for me so I mean it doesn't matter whether you have uh, cheap incubators like this or you know go and buy an expensive one um, the same method should apply um, but it is definitely one of those things where I've just had very very good luck with this so this is what I do first off I have uh, all my incubators on this uh, shelving unit type thing and uh, I have basically these two are plugged in. Um, actually, the all three on the top are plugged in. The two down here are plugged in, and this one's plugged in. Right now, I only have six of them running. Um, I've got two spares over here that are not running right now, and I also have a few others um, in the back room that uh, aren't running as well. But basically, what I have here are the six incubators that are running. Uh, they can hold up to probably about 600 eggs total. Whenever I go through and show you the insides of the eggs, uh, you'll be able to see uh, what I mean by that. Most of my egg containers will contain about 16 eggs a piece, and then there is about uh, or there's six of those per incubator I can fit but some of the incubators actually have bigger containers in them which I'll show you those as well and they can fit uh, I want to say like 30 40 eggs a piece in each container so basically what I do and uh, I use Ovibator incubators which uh, I like the pitcher window ones for the uh, for the later stage incubation just so that I can look in without opening and see uh, if there's any babies in there which actually if you look you can probably see a few babies in that one a couple babies in that one uh, two babies it looks like in that one and it uh, looks like about six of them in that one so this is actually my final stage incubator uh, for for my leopard geckos basically what I do is I have two incubators that are 90 degrees which one of them I put the ones that I want to have male in and then the other one is just the final stage incubator um, so that pretty much everything hatches out of one of these two incubators right here. What I do um, is basically a Ron Tremper-esque style method where I do uh, low incubation for females and then they basically get snaked through um, until they get to uh, a 90 degree incubator this definitely helps with color um, for some animals. For some animals it doesn't help. It, it, it's typically uh, good for color in albinos um, so you don't get like the chocolatey dark ones if you will. Um, as far as uh, some of the other morphs, I don't know if it really helps them or not uh, like any of the tangerines or stuff like that. It's just basically how I do things so no matter what container they are they follow the same method. So whenever I first get eggs, um, they usually go down into this bottom one right here. This one is my 80 degree incubator. So if I want females, they first go into this incubator right here. As you can see, I have one little small container in there that's for a special project and the other ones are just for my normal everyday um, projects. Uh, the big one in the back, um, you can see, definitely can hold a lot more eggs. Um, I want to say that that's uh, close to like 30 eggs in that one, but the, the other ones usually have between 16 to 20 eggs in them. As you can see, there are different colors as well. The colors indicate what week uh, I uh, pretty much pulled the eggs. Um, what I do is I have a four color system that basically... Um, see how these ones are all marked in black, those ones are all marked in red. The ones in red were actually uh, pulled a week before the black ones. 
why I do this is basically whenever I am pulling eggs, um, you can see that this incubator uh, has all red, red uh, identifiers on them. So this was the same week as those, uh, the other two eggs down here. Basically why I do that is, one, it lets me know um, on the uh, containers themselves when the eggs should hatch and gives me a roundabout estimate of which eggs are what and pulled on what week. Also on the breeder tubs, it uh, lets me know when the uh, when the female had laid her last clutch. Since I do it every week, I can basically look at the tub and tell when the the next clutch of eggs is going to be. So it, it helps with that. Plus it also helps uh, seeing uh, when, you know, females uh, are, are doing different things with their eggs, basically. Um, it's it just a method that I use. Um, it's kind of a weird method, but it works for me. Um, as you can see in here, it has a bunch of red eggs, um, and then it definitely has the one container with a ton of eggs in it. Um, and how I put eggs into a container is definitely by project, um, or if there's not enough eggs for that project to go in a container, they're projects that definitely look totally opposite from each other, so I can tell which ones they are just by whatever they hatch. Um, the huge group here um, is a bunch of marble eye stuff, different crosses, um, so that's why I can just pretty much put them in there and uh, whenever they hatch I can tell which ones are which. Uh, this one only has a couple uh, uh, containers of eggs in it. You can see there's two missing out of this one. Uh, basically what I have to do is rotate some eggs from this incubator right there into this incubator. Uh, I just haven't done it yet. Uh, it's uh, one of those things that I just go through and rotate them about once a week. And as you can see they're getting into the blue coloration now in here. So basically it goes green, blue, red, black. As you can see, there's some black ones in there as well. Those are some males. There's a green, which you see the baby in there, kind of sleeping. There's just some more blues. The blue week, it definitely was a big week for uh, egg laying. And then there's some more babies in this one. which I'll actually pull some of these babies out so you can see them and see what I mean by uh, I can tell which eggs they are just by where they were alright so let's uh, actually get some of these babies out so you can see them as far as uh, the um, setting up the eggs I did the video on setting up the eggs so you guys should be able to uh, go back and look at that and see what I was talking about uh, setting up the eggs and, and stuff like that. Uh, basically what I do is I do a, a one to one ratio of the perlite to water in these little containers. Um, usually these containers I put about uh, 50 grams of perlite and then uh, 50 to 60 grams of water and that is definitely enough for them to get through their whole incubation period without me ever really doing anything with them, adding water or anything like that. So um, these containers are actually sealed. Um, once they're sealed, um, which actually whenever you can you can actually see in here, the, uh, the containers that I use are just Chinese takeout containers that I've acquired over the years basically from eating Chinese food and um, they're, they're just restaurant containers basically so it's very easy to acquire these um, I don't know exactly where you can find them online but I'm sure if you go to like a restaurant supply store or anything or a store online you can definitely get these uh, basically the uh, let's see here, I'll just open this up so you can see these guys are probably going to run out so that's why I put the tub underneath them. But basically there's a little lip on here that uh, I don't uh, fill it up past that and these are actually two pure Montanus babies that have just hatched out. 
actually how I can tell that is if you look on this container um, they were basically arranged in a certain order in the container and then they were actually labeled above it um, as you can see some of these are actually marked off um, those ones are ones that have already hatched so in case like the uh, eggshells or anything like that get moved you can still tell what uh, which which eggs have hatched and if you just set this right over top of that you can actually see where these two were um, and that is definitely um, you can see their shells right there that was where they came out of the only one that hasn't hatched out of this one is this one right here and uh, I'm actually going to show you um, if I can um, where did I put my flashlight at? shoot um, I think I forgot my flashlight alright we're going to walk over here real quick to grab the flashlight uh, if it's over here no, nope, I don't even see it. Okay, we're going to come back over. Um, I was going to show you the difference between... Oh, here it is. Usually I have my flashlight over here, but it was over on the uh, other stand. Alright, basically I'm going to show you a bad egg. This egg still looks good. Um, you can see it's still very plump. Hasn't, uh, you know, molded over or anything like that. Um, but whenever you shine a flashlight on it, it definitely has, you know, a yellow tint to it. At this point during incubation, this egg should have um, should have turned pink by now, because this is an egg that has been incubating for uh, probably about a month and a half. So this egg definitely is going to be bad, and I'll actually uh, break it open so you guys can see this real quick. And this is just one of the things that happens with uh, egg incubation um, that uh, basically. See, see all this yellow gook in here? This is basically just uh, a bad egg. And it, uh, it looked good throughout the whole incubation, but there was nothing in it. Um, this will happen. Uh, it's one of those things that um, you'll get bad eggs. Not every single egg is going to be good, and not every single you know, egg is going to hatch. That's why they say, you know, don't count your baby geckos before they hatch, because basically some eggs are going to be bad. Which that cross, it would have been awesome to have, because um, that was actually a Snowbell white and yellow het radar cross to a radar, uh, was that cross, but uh, just, uh, you know, never started to form. So, we're just going to basically take this out of the incubator and get rid of that, because they're all gone. And this will leave me an extra spot in here, so I will actually rotate um, another container into this container or into this incubator so that I can have uh, you know another another one incubating um, also we've got uh, this egg right here as you can see everybody else from this container is already hatched out um, this has been about a week or two since they since it has hatched or all the other ones have hatched this one again you can see the yellowish coloration to it uh, no veining or anything like that so that one's probably bad as well. Um, so what we're going to do is just cut it open. And basically we just, oh, you see them splatter sometimes. And again, the yellow gook. So that one was a bad one as well. Which, like I said, it happens. Um, you know, but out of pretty much, it looks like uh, there was 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 eggs in there. One bad one. That's, that's not bad odds. Um, usually you'll get... Uh, you know, about, you know, 5 to maybe 10% will be bad eggs, um, and they just never form or anything like that. And you'll, like I said, you'll have it. Um, so what this is, uh, these two are pure Montanus. So we're actually going to pull these guys out and just put them into another container. Um, and then I'll get some of these other babies out so you can see them. Um, let's show you, uh, this one's pretty good. All right. What we have here are actually um, a universe baby, which the universe is just a, uh, a super eclipse white and yellow, basically. As you can see, whenever they hatch out, they're very, very white. Um, almost no spotting at all. A little bit of a grayish tone to them. 
um, but uh, for the most part they are uh, pretty pure as far as coloration goes. A little bit gray, but uh, very, very cool looking baby. Um, easily recognizable compared to a uh, Super Eclipse. Super Eclipses definitely have like more of a grayish pattern to them and are very, very dark as babies. Uh, the other one that we have here is actually um, it's probably a marble eye, or at least a, at the very least a het. Um, what that guy is is basically I have a weird uh, paradoxed uh, marble eye animal, um, and that was crossed to a uh, white and yellow het marble eye. So we got a uh, the universe right here. And then a uh, cool marble eye project animal right there. And then as you can see, we have two, two eggshells there. So we're just going to set those off to the side. I'm going to check these eggs just to make sure that they're okay. You can see in this one it's very, very pink still. So that one's good to go. Same thing with this one. And this one's very, very pink as well. This one will probably hatch out next. Um, that one is uh, going to be the sibling to the universe, which that one was a, um, a TE, which is a total eclipse crossed to a universe. Uh, so it's either going to be a universe baby or a total eclipse baby. It's definitely going to be a super, definitely going to have eclipse to it. So the only question will be, is it going to be white and yellow or not? Um, we still have a wow baby left, and it looks like a... Uh, um, extreme tangerine um, cross to another tangerine so we'll be easily be able to tell the three apart this one's definitely going to be a super and it's definitely going to be an eclipse this one will be a banded animal and this one will be like a patternless stripe or jungle looking animal as well so we'll be able to tell those ones apart pretty easily um, as you can see all the rest of them are marked off um, or I gotta mark those ones off because those ones are gone and uh, we're going to slide these guys into a container so that uh, I can show you a couple more. Just going to dump those guys in. Uh, let's see here. Here's some G Project stuff that we can show you. As you can see, a lot of babies hatch out at the same time sometimes. And you'll definitely have that. Hey everybody out. Got some cool jungly ones in here. Got a raptor. This is a, a yolk sack that just got, uh, wasn't absorbed. Put all those over there. Alright, that egg's still incubating. And then again, I take all the shells out just so that uh, they're not in the way anymore. Looks like three babies left in this one to go. And we got one, uh, one ember cross to raptor. Um, and then uh, got some other cool ones in here yet. This one's still very pink. This one's yellow. That one's bad. And that one's yellow. So we're actually going to do the same thing where I'll break those two open. Just get the container that uh, that I'd already used for this. And again, the yellow gook. So that one was bad. And this one was yellow as well. Oop, I just squirted that everywhere. Um, another yellow gooky one. I literally just shot that egg all over the freaking place. Got all over my stuff here. Yeah, whenever you're breaking eggs open, just be careful you don't squirt it in your eye. <laughs> it's probably not good to do that. But, uh, as you can see, like, they they looked good, but they just, uh, they just never, you know, went full term. This guy's going to hatch out probably in the next day or two, so we'll have him... Uh, put to the side right there and then move this out of the way let's take a look at these uh, G project babies 
Got some nice carrot tail on that one. This one's going to be really nice in coloration. You can already tell as a baby. These ones are definitely going to be some cool jungly looking ones. Um, nice little reverse stripe one there. Nice raptor. This raptor is going to be very, very nice as well. You can see the carrot tail already on it. It's probably going to be a good 75% carrot tail animal. And it looks like it has solid eyes right now. So that one's going to be definitely a nice looking animal. Um, you can kind of see the carrot tail coming in on some of these. Uh, with the G project, you can tell how much carrot tail they're going to have uh, straight from hatching. Um, you can see that this one's going to have a heck of a lot more. This one's actually an eclipse too. Um, so that's really cool. It's going to be one of those uh, crazy eclipse looking ones, the solar eclipses. Um, these guys are just going to be the jungly ones. Um, but still, the jungly ones turn out really, really cool. That's how you get the, uh, the greenish tints to the animal as well. Whenever you have this dark patterning on them with the orange comer coming in on top. I'll have to give you guys an update of these guys as they grow because these guys are definitely going to look pretty sweet. Um, but these guys, we're going to put them in... Uh, put them in another container right here so we can see uh, what else we got left in the incubator all right here we got some cool looking bold stripe stuff um, they're a bold stripe uh, tangerine cross um, that these guys are going to look pretty sweet you can definitely see the color coming in on them and then this guy is actually a marble eye this is a marble eye crossed a marble eye, so I know for sure that it's definitely a marble eye um, without even checking his eyes. Um, but uh, I'll probably check his eyes later. It's just going to be pretty hard to do with the camera on top of my head. And uh, these are the ones that have hatched. This one and then this one. This actually brings up a pretty good point as well. Some people say or uh, talk about how their eggs are stuck together. And this one you can actually see that the eggs are still stuck together. Um, but I'll leave this shell still attached to this other one. Um, as you can see, they hatch without any problem. Um, and actually, this one has dried up enough that it just peeled right off. But uh, don't be worried if your eggs are, you know, stuck together. The, the babies will still hatch. They still find a way out. So uh, it's definitely not one of those things to worry about. Let's see if I can show you uh, more of the pink tint. See how that egg's pink? That's still a good one. That one's good. Uh, these ones, you can really see it. They're very, very pink. Some more pink ones. This one will be a really good one to show you um, right here. You can actually see the veins in that one. I actually collected these ones. Oh, you can see the baby moving, actually. Kind of swimming around in there. This one's definitely pretty cool, just to see all the veins and stuff like that. Let's see if I can get them to move around a little bit. Like I said, this one's going to be a Tremper Marble Eye as well, um, but uh, very, very cool. Let's see if these ones are any good. These ones are, have a little bit uh, too much of the cocoa fiber on them to really see through them real well. This one's actually a really cool egg just because there's not really any cocoa fiber stuck to it or anything like that. I basically pulled these ones right as she was laying them um, so they didn't have a chance to get the cocoa fiber on them. But that's still freaking pretty sweet watching the baby move around in there. But Yep, so that guy should be hatching probably in the next, uh, I would say, 24 hours. I mean, the, the sibling's already out, so um, it'll definitely won't be very long till uh, those guys actually hatch out. So definitely uh, some cool stuff you got to see with all this stuff. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I'll, I'll try to make a second video as well, so that you guys can, um, uh, for all the questions that you guys have asked about the incubation, um, I can post those up. I'm actually going to pull these guys too, because I know which ones those are pretty easily. These are some uh, bold stripe bells that I work with. Um, very, very cool as well. They're not perfect stripes by any means, uh, but these guys definitely, uh, the parents have thrown some pure, like some perfect stripes already this year. But uh, I just don't think the line's strong enough that it throws perfect stripes every time. Um, but these guys are still very, very cool. Very, very uh, lavender coming in there as well. That one's got a nice stripe to the tail. 
But it's still like a broken stripe, so it's nothing super, super crazy or anything like that, but definitely still cool animals. And then they came from these two eggs right here, so I'll pull those out just so I can see. And we've got some pure fascio eggs cooking. These are uh, pure Afghanicus. And all these guys look look good still. They've kicked this one pretty much the whole way around. Um, as you can see also, I don't mark the tops of my eggs. Um, I, I don't feel that it really affects them that if they get turned over or anything like that. I've definitely had uh, babies wreck the inside and eggs get turned all around and, and moved. Um, and it's never uh, impeded uh, the babies from hatching by any means. Uh, so I don't really ever, uh, you know, mark the tops because um, I just don't think it's it's worth it. And then I did have one more baby in the other incubator here. That'll pull this guy out. But this guy is actually from the uh, one of the Afra projects. His dad is actually a. Uh, Gem Snow Tremper, so this one's going to be het for Tremper, and it, as you can see it's already a Gem Snow, very cool looking pattern to its back, um, there's his eggshell, so we'll get that out of the way, and he's a screamer, that's for sure, a cool looking baby. A lot of the stuff from the Afri, or the uh, Afra project, uh, which is basically stands for the the first cross, was uh, pure Afghanicus to Raptor. Uh, a lot of those babies are very very cool, really crazy looking patterns and stuff. Um, so I really like working with those guys, and then putting the gem snow into it makes it even better, just because you can have uh, snows that won't produce supers. But uh, nice little group of babies right there. So as you can see, there's uh, what there's six right there. Got another six right there. That's 12, 13, 14, and then 15, 16 with pure Montanus. So uh, not a bad day today. Getting 16 babies out already this morning. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the incubator video. I'm gonna move this container over here so that this one stays full. And then try to get this unstuck so that I can put this back on here. And then actually I'll rotate some of the eggs just so you can see how I do it. Basically everything gets snaked through. So I'll need some more blue ones to put into here. So we'll just put two containers from there into there. Close this one back up. And then go down here, and actually I have two blue containers here, so we'll move these blue containers up. And actually this one has a bad egg in it, so I'll just, as I move them, I check to see if they have any bad eggs. This one's definitely a bad egg, you can see it molding over and just turning gross, collapsing on itself. Um, these ones are, this one's definitely bad, so we'll just get rid of that. And then whenever we get rid of them... We just take a marker of a different color and just basically mark that it's not there anymore. Um, that's just for whenever they hatch out and stuff like that. Um, sometimes you'll see eggs that uh, they start to dry out a little bit and get dented. Um, don't worry about those ones. I would still keep those incubating. There's usually babies still in those ones. The ones that you want to throw out are the moldy ones. If uh, they start to mold over, those are bad ones. I'll actually rotate all this stuff uh, later because I know the video is getting a little long. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the incubation video. Got to see some babies. Uh, the next video that I'll do is probably like setting up the babies, stuff like that. I know that I've done a an old one, but uh, I'll, I'll make a, an updated version of one. Um, and again, these are just Ova incubators, or Ova beta incubators, I should say, um, with basically the waffle thermostat thing in here and the the heat that goes around you probably saw the light on most of the time um, that just means that it's working 
Um, I've always just had very, very good luck with these. They, they stay pretty much at a constant temperature within a degree or two, um, especially whenever um, I have the... Uh, as long as you keep the place where these guys are, are at at a very, very controlled temperature, um, these guys will stay at a, at a very constant temperature as well. Um, that's why basically I incubate everything in the basement as well because it never gets too hot down here. So, uh, but if you guys have any more questions or anything like that about incubation, please comment below or uh, hit me up on Facebook and I'll try to make a, a second incubator video just on uh, about your questions and stuff like that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you next time.